Hi guys, welcome back to the Resolve Cent where we give you tips about financial planning, career development, budgeting, and how to strive towards financial independence. So last week, I put out a tweet about LinkedIn that seemed to generate a lot of interest and several people DM'd me to ask about specific strategies and how they could be more successful with networking and job searching on LinkedIn. Well, if you've ever had questions about LinkedIn, today is your lucky day because today we'll be answering some of those questions. We'll be sharing some tips and resources on how you can get the best out of LinkedIn as you build your career, network, or search for new opportunities. And most importantly, towards the end of this video, we'll be sharing an outreach strategy that has totally changed the game for us when job searching. This is something that we haven't heard talked about anywhere else and considering how effective it is, it's definitely something we'd want you to know as you navigate LinkedIn. So make sure you watch till the end of this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're interested in content like this. Now let's get into the video. The first thing you need to do is to add a profile photo. And this should be a professional looking headshot in a well-lit environment. This is important because people that view your profile typically want to see who they're connecting with. Once you have a nice looking professional photo, the next thing you need to tackle is your headline. Think about it as a short, effective pitch that conveys who you are, what you do, and what kind of opportunities you're looking for. It should be concise and straight to the point. The next thing you should tackle is your profile summary. Your summary goes right below your profile image, and it's a great way to give an introductory overview about yourself and your professional experience. LinkedIn has a 2000 character limit on how much you can write here. So you need to make sure that you have the most important information that you would want someone viewing your profile to see. After your profile summary, you'll need to add your most recent job positions and you should include brief descriptions about your responsibilities at each of these roles. In the end, you should aim to have your profile as close to an all-star profile as you can. LinkedIn has this indicator bar that rates the quality of your profile based on how filled out it is. The more relevant information you add, the higher you're rated, and the more likely you'll rank in searches and be visible to recruiters and hiring managers. So if you're currently not working, a good way to beat the LinkedIn algorithm is to still have a current position and let the title of that position be something like a freelancer in the kind of role that you want. And under the description for that role, write that you're open to new opportunities and give more insight into what specific roles you're interested in. Now that your profile is ready, let's talk about how you can tap into one of the biggest superpowers of LinkedIn, and that is connecting you to other people. When it comes to building your network on LinkedIn, you need to be strategic. Your first instinct, especially when you just start out, might be to blast out connection requests to random people. And some people do this without even filling out their profiles and wonder why no one is responding to their connection requests. You need to be strategic. Start by adding the people you already know, your colleagues at work, old school mates, family and friends. The reason why you do that is because people you already know will be more likely to accept your request to connect even when your profile is just fresh out. Once you've added a couple of these people, say 50 or 60 of them, then you can move on to adding recruiters, employees, and hiring managers from companies you're interested in working at. So you'll want to get your number of connections to at least 500. And here are some key reasons why. Having 500 plus connections is a good benchmark for appearing active on LinkedIn if you're job searching. It tells recruiters, hiring managers, and people that might be looking at your profile, hey, I'm pretty serious with LinkedIn, and if you reach out to me, I'll likely respond. Another good reason for increasing your connection count is as you connect with more people, you gain access to more people. That sounds a bit complex, right? Here's what it means. On LinkedIn, people in your network are called connections. Your network is made up of your first degree, second degree, and third degree connections. And the degree of connection you have with a LinkedIn member affects how you can interact with them. So once you add someone, they become a first degree connection and people in their network become second degree connections, even though you haven't added them. So in a way, the more you add people, the more the world of LinkedIn opens up to you. Leave a comment below and let us know how many LinkedIn connections you have. And if you have less than 500, what do you think has kept you from hitting this milestone? Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel below and give this video a thumbs up. So now let's continue to the number one thing that recruiters ask for during the connection and application stage. Once you've built out your network, you need to make sure that your resume or portfolio and contact details are ready. 
any recruiter that you reach out to or any recruiter that reaches out to you will always ask for one thing, your resume or your portfolio. One of the greatest benefits of using LinkedIn as your main job search platform is that your resume can get into the hands of recruiters way faster than normal. When you apply for a job on a company website or a job site, there is no guarantee that it'll ever get into the hands of a human that will read through it and see your amazing qualities. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to recruiters and that eliminates the extra step of applying on a job board. If you have a portfolio, make sure to check that the link works and leads to the right website. You should also have your email and phone number ready in the event the recruiter asks for it. We won't go into any resume writing details in this video because there are tons of those here on YouTube as well as all over the internet. If you've watched the video up to this point, thanks for sticking around. Now we're going to share the top hack and outreach strategy that has been effective for us at different points in our job search journeys. Like we mentioned earlier, this is a very simple strategy that anyone can apply, but is rarely ever talked about. Today, we'd like to walk you through this tactic with the hope that it will help make your job search process a lot easier and quicker. I must note that your success in applying the strategy is contingent upon completing the previous steps. For this strategy to work effectively, you have to fill out your profile properly and build your network with connections that are in industries or roles you're interested in. Once you're done with that, you're ready to dive right in. So this strategy is focused around LinkedIn search. LinkedIn features a powerful and precise search algorithm with amazing filters that allows you to tailor down and fine tune your search to find what or who you're looking for. However, what I found when job hunting was searching for companies or people and then reaching out to them didn't really yield results for me because there was no way I could tell beforehand if the person I was reaching out to would be receptive or responsive to my message. So this was the point when I thought to myself, what if there was a way to tell or somehow guarantee a response to my messages? I realized early on I could save myself a lot of time and effort if I if I could just find recruiters or managers that were actively hiring and reach out to them directly, eliminating the need to go through the treacherous process of filling out long application forms, uploading my resume, and sometimes getting immediate rejection emails from automated HR software. So essentially what you want to do is go on LinkedIn, type in is hiring or I'm hiring or hiring or some variation of it into the search box and hit enter. Once you do that, you immediately get a list of results and from those results, you'll potentially see a few people with I'm hiring or is hiring in their headlines. The awesome thing about this is I can reach out to these people and instead of sending one of those random dry LinkedIn messages, I can be a lot more specific and be like, hey, I saw your headline that you're hiring for principal designers and I'm interested. LinkedIn also lets you filter this search by posts or content. So if I click on the content tab, I can see posts where people have included the hiring keyword. In my personal experience, I found that responding to posts before you DM leads to better outcomes because you don't have to request to add the person you're reaching out to first or pay for LinkedIn Premium before you can directly message them. That being said, LinkedIn Premium is definitely worth paying for, especially during your job search because it allows you to send more DMs or in-mail to people outside your network. And this is a huge benefit when using this method. So once you find a few people you'd like to reach out to, it's time to message them. Now, in case you're wondering, what exactly should I say in my message when I reach out? There's no need to worry because we're gonna take care of that. We've added a link in the description box below to download a template we've been most successful with in the past. All we ask is that you please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to gain access to that template. So one last bonus tip is to download the LinkedIn Jobs app and turn on the notifications. As soon as a new job that fits the filters that you set is posted, you'll get a notification. It's a great way to learn about new positions right as they're uploaded. Most of the jobs posted on this app usually include the person that posted the job, and that way you know who you can reach out to directly. Additionally, both the regular LinkedIn app and the LinkedIn Jobs app lets you know when your application has been looked at. This is a great way to get some direct feedback about what's happening to your application. I think it's way better than applying on some random site that basically swallows your resume and personal information down a black hole. LinkedIn has provided two great platforms that help job seekers and there's no better time to utilize those tools than now. That brings us to the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed these LinkedIn tips and have found them helpful. 
Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything we've mentioned today. We'll be more than happy to clarify. And don't forget to download our effective LinkedIn message template linked in the description box below. If this video provided any value to you, please give us a thumbs up, smash the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.